Oh, hello everyone. I am back from my two-day hiatus from finals. Obviously, that was a nightmare, but we have four topics to talk about today. Before we start, please make sure to join the Hockey Brigade by subscribing if you're new. Well, let's just get into it. So, the first thing we'll be talking about is the Olympic issues NHL players are facing. And this is not good just in any way you look at it outside of hockey as well. For one... Some people are calling for athletes not to go to the Winter Olympics because of the reports of human rights violations of the population in a northwestern region of China at the hands of the Chinese government. While China denies these are or there are human rights violations, other countries really don't believe that, and then that leaves NHL players to decide what to do for themselves in terms of going or not going. Now, this obviously means... Players will probably either face backlash because they choose to represent their country and go, or they're going to face backlash for not going because they didn't go and represent their country. So either way, it's a lose-lose, and you really have to decide, A, are you going to go or not? And that is a tough call to make. Obviously, you would go with probably not because of the uh, tendency or the past that China has with human rights violations, and it makes you wonder if that was the case, what was even the point of having China host it, but yeah, that's a lot to deal with. On top of that, it looks like it'd be even more unlikely we're going to see NHL players in the Winter Olympics, because if they were to test positive for COVID in China, they would have to stay within the country for five weeks, meaning any NHL games that they missed would not be paid for, and you'd be stuck in China and well, I'm sure it's a great place to visit, again, with human rights violations, stuff like that, and it is obviously got a pest of everything. I'm sure you wouldn't want to have to be there too, too long, so it'll be unlikely we see a high NHL turnout. Now, moving on to another tough topic to talk about, that is goalie Ben Bishop retiring, and this, you know, this really is just unfortunate. The 35-year-old goalie finished his career with 222 wins in 413 games played and will definitely be remembered for his career once he ended up in Tampa Bay and then from there on because he really just found a lot of success not only in Tampa Bay but other markets as well. He finished top three in Vesna voting three times in his career and personally I was just so so shocked when Andre Vasilevsky won the Vesna in 2019 considering Bishop in my opinion, probably had a better year. I'd have to take an in-depth look about it. Um, but yeah, he had a sub-2 goals against average and didn't win the Vesna. How often does that happen? Crazy. And while he didn't win a Stanley Cup in the league or in his time with the league so far, maybe as a coach, who's, who knows, he definitely left his mark on it as he was a star over Andre Vasilevsky. We saw where that went as he is a great goalie for Tampa Bay right now. And, you know, he blew everyone's mind when he was sent over to L.A. to be with Jonathan Quick. And they had that duo. Everybody was thinking, wow, this could be great. And he was a fan favorite of the Dallas Stars. Now, unfortunately for him and us as fans, he just couldn't recover from knee surgery. And for a goalie, that is a huge issue. You know, you got to drop all, you got to stop at five all, you got to be able to go cross crease, get over to the other side. And that's just not going to be a good thing if you can't do that. So while he probably won't end up in the Hall of Fame, I do think he is one of the most underrated goalies from this time period or his time period. And uh, yeah, he's actually fifth all time career save percentage in that regards at the moment. So just to give you emphasis on how good he was, fifth all time in career save percentage. Heading up to Montreal, we have more bad news, and I feel so bad because I'm talking about so many unfortunate negative things in this video, but we had to talk about it, and that is Tyler Toffoli's injury. The Habs forward will be out eight weeks thanks to a hand surgery, and it couldn't have happened at a worse time for Montreal, who is being plagued with injuries right now and poor play for this season. Toffoli is second on the team, four points with 17 points in 26 games played. And I think it's just somebody the fans could really revolve around and just focus on. Because while this is a terrible season for Montreal, and looks like it'll finish terrible, they just could use any players to look forward to watch. They could just use anything because they've been plagued by injuries before the season started, during poor play, GM fired, all that good stuff. And it is just crazy to think that they were, you know, a few wins away from winning this in the Cup this past year. Now, finally, speaking of pain, and some would say never-ending pain in regards to this, Commissioner Gary Bettman said that he plans to stay around for a long time. And that is a little surprising considering he's a little bit older and he has been around for almost 30 years with the league, so I am a little surprised by that. And it's going to be a issue for the people that despise the man. 
This is especially true for those that feel he hates Canadian teams or markets. Obviously, he had Winnipeg go on down to Arizona. You had just, it was, there's been a lot of things with that where they feel that why didn't an NHL team go and relocate or expand in Canada? It's a whole thing. Canadians don't like Gary Bettman, I think, for the most part because of why there are so few Canadian teams when there are potential good markets. I don't know. It's a whole other video to talk about there. But yeah, this is just one of those things that if you hate him, you're going to have to be stuck with him. I would say probably another five-ish years would be tough to say. But yeah, he has obviously done some good and some bad with his tenure. And while I'm not a future fan of him and his personality, I do think that he has done some good things in terms of TV deals to help out the league. Obviously, we got the ESPN deal, which is worth a lot of money, helps us out, and hopefully we can get a better deal once this ends. And just expanding the league, whether that's for better or worse, you do have some markets that we didn't have teams in originally when he came in, and they've been able to do pretty well for themselves and establish themselves as a hockey market. So that is a wrap for today's video. My apologies that it was all basically negative and that I haven't put out a video in the past two days. But like I said, finals were crazy, but they're over and it looks like I passed all my classes. And now we get to see whether or not I make the Dean's List. So before you go, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and join the Hockey Brigade if you are new by subscribing. Everybody stay safe. Have a great night. Good luck hockey, all right? Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. This is your captain signing off. Have a great night.